I might have overpaid for this car. Good morning. We're going to hop in the one ton Ford and snake our way up through Texas to get a Rambler American somewhere around Waco town, wherever the siege took place in 93. Maybe we shouldn't go up there. Nah. Wakens don't bite. Wait, Wakens? Wake, Wakeians? Wake, wait, wait, Waconians? Waconites? Samsonite? It's either a 1961, 2, or 3. The seller doesn't know, and I don't know, I haven't even seen the car in person yet, but I've seen some pictures, and the body style is the second generation American. This right here is a 1962 Rambler. You've seen this a million times here on Freeman's Garage and Freeman's Garage Extra, but this is a Rambler classic. It's not as patriotic as the American. Since this video that you're watching right now is here on the Freeman's Garage Extra channel, I get to give you a little behind the scenes tidbit, a little piece of info that otherwise I, I normally would not be taking the time to add in. And it's that, uh, unfortunately, I don't think filming of loading the car on this property is going to take place. And if that doesn't happen, please don't jump off the video. Please stick with me. <laughs> Give a guy a break. I can't, I mean, I'm, I mean, I, I am Superman, but yeah, I have the shirt. Just kidding, I don't have a Superman shirt. I do not. Oh, one more quick extra tidbit. If you're one of those that, you know, are kinda, kinda wanting to see the word sold come off this window since this car has been sitting in here for months. I know, it bugs me too. I swear, very soon I'll wipe that off of there. The Ford's already loaded up and hooked up and ready to rock and roll. This has to get done quick in a specific time window, but we are gonna take a little bit of time to figure out our fuel mileage on this trip. It's gonna be close to 200 miles, and we're running a big block 390 in this truck, so. Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to be the best. More on that later. We got to hit the road, but why don't you just go ahead and put your guesses in the comments. A 2016 regular cab, long bed, four-wheel drive, F350, pulling a 18-foot car trailer, about 100 miles empty, and then about 100 miles uh, with a small car like this on it. What do you think the fuel mileage is gonna be? All right, let's put some fuel on and hit the road. Go get this Rambler. Now, I'm not even gonna show you the pump here because however many gallons we put in, it doesn't matter. We just need to start off with a full tank and then when we get back, we will fill the tank again, just letting it click. We're not gonna, you know, be all cool and round up to the nearest dollar and that's the number that's gonna matter. How many gallons goes in the tank when we get back? Because that's what we're gonna need to do our mathematistics with the total number of miles that we travel on this trip. <laughs> it's elementary, my dear Watson. Alrighty, we've arrived on location and, ooh, a cab over just went by. <laughs> Got distracted. I break for cab overs. We're here on location and like we talked about before, we are not going to be filming any of this gentleman's property. And I do see the car sitting over there, so I'm gonna go meet him right now and uh, do the transaction. Get the thing loaded up, and then, uh, yeah, I'll see you in, well, if, if nothing breaks and my winch battery isn't dead, I'll see you in like 
20 minutes. Oh man, is it ever hot out there doing things like loading cars. And it's only March. It's going to be a long, hot summer down here in Texas. You know, us northern boys, we function the best at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And loading the car took a bit longer. I was hoping about 20 minutes. And it actually took about 30, 35 minutes because my winch battery uh, crapped out on me, but luckily, the guy I bought this car from, he's a really good guy, and he was nice enough to take the big old honking battery out of his cab over Pete, and then my winch performed flawlessly and drugged the locked up flat rock hard Nixon era tires up my tall ramps and onto the trailer, and and, and all was good. Alrighty, well, let's hit the road ski. Let's chew up some pavement. Let's hit the bricks. Let's get the steel belts humming on the asphalt. And after we put a few miles behind us, we'll find an appropriate place to slide her on into. And we'll hop out of the cab and we'll walk around the car and uh, take a little sneak peek at what we bought here. I might have I might have overpaid for it. I'll go into I'll go into that a little bit when we stop. There's an auto rack at the end. It's probably not a rambler in it, though. about halfway back just stopped at this rest area that was built in the 1930s I think hold on highway noise just to check the strap arenies on the car make sure it's not gonna fall off and end up underneath a big rig and also to check the lug nuts on the trailer and do a little back of the hand test on the uh, hubs make sure the wheel bearings aren't getting hot because I just Tore this, tore this trailer apart yesterday and repacked everything, so just making sure that's not gonna come apart. Yeah, I just found the key on the ground. Maybe it's me lucky charm. Oh, maybe it's not. We don't know what year this is yet. We'll figure that out over on the Freeman's Garage channel, but it is a second generation American which means that it's a 61 through 63. There should be a 196 cubic inch straight six Nash design AMC slash Rambler powerhouse under the hood, which the hood, we're trying to uh, not have this, hold on, noise of the highway. We're trying to not have this fly off because it's in mint condition. That's why we got a green strap here, which is funny because the last Rambler we brought home on Freeman's Garage was a 62 Rambler Classic, and we had the same green ratchet strap holding the trunk lid down, and this time it's holding the hood down. You see how I got this set up, is if I start to see this excess strap here start flapping in the wind when I'm looking in my passenger side mirror, that's how I know that this strap is loosening up and it's time to pull over and save this hood from crumpling up like a... Uh, I don't know, I can't think of anything funny. Wait, wait, let's go back to this. I thought of something funny. To keep it from folding in half like a newspaper. This generation of American has a 100 inch wheelbase. That's tiny. That's loud. Uh, Freeman here needs uh, to get a good microphone on his camera. The previous generation, the first generation of the Rambler American, they were uh, a little bit bigger. They made the second generation a little bit shorter and a little bit 
narrower. This second generation American is almost identical to the first generation mechanically. Now with being a little bit narrower and a little bit shorter here in the second generation, one other thing is that they became a little bit more square, a little more boxy, and some even, you know, some uh, might even refer to it as a bread box, and I think people did at the time, and this one's white. I wonder if it's avalanche white, it could be. We don't know yet, we'll find out, but should this be Project Bread Box? Or is that just dumb? Comment below. They actually moved the brake and clutch pedal mounting location from under the floor Love those 18 wheelers. If it wasn't for them, the shelves would be empty. Any hoosers, they moved the brake and clutch pedal mounting location from under the floor, which is how they did it in the first gen. Second gen, they moved it to the firewall. I'm not gonna get into it right now in this video, but I think that I might have overpaid for this car. I do plan on possibly telling you how much I paid for this car and future videos either here on Freeman's Garage Extra or over on the Freeman's Garage channel. If you're interested in that, uh, let me know in the comments. But for right now, I will just say that, uh, well, for one, some of these dents, I swear, we're gonna have to go back in another video too and look at the pictures that I was sent before I bought the car because <laughs> it's funny, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. It's just funny because this dent, that big dent in the door that could be a cow rub, if this was ever in a pasture, and the trunk back here, this big old boy here, look at that honker. I didn't see any of that in the pictures, I swear. All these dents, like I knew the tail lights weren't there, but that's probably from it being drug out from wherever it was. But here's the big one. Here's the the big one. Look at this. I swear, I did not see this in the pictures. Look at that thing. Oh, and by the way, I, I wish I could get the window up all the way. I probably could, but I'd have to get this door open and I can't right now. But look at the headliner. If you can see it. The thing is mint. I don't want the wind to rip it down. Um, yeah, and I, I think I spotted a little bit of daylight through the floor in the car too. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but even, even if it's not as good as I thought it was, maybe I didn't overpay for it because there's something special underneath the hood that I did verify was there before I loaded the car up and paid for it. And that, you know, feature video here on Freeman's Garage Extra or Freeman's Garage. We'll get into all that. And there's uh, a sticker on there I haven't read on the windshield. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in the car too. I, I've, I, I've barely peeked my head in there for a half a second. Apparently this car belonged to a pack rat that was also some sort of special secret agent or something during World War II and he was known for hiding things. So, uh, uh, I don't know, but there could be anything in here. Who knows, World War II bayonet? And there's some other things too about this car that are, uh, that it has in common with the 1962 Rambler from previous videos over on Freeman's Garage. You've, you've seen all that, you've watched all the videos. We'll get into all that stuff later. And one of the things has to do with the license plate on this car. Oh man, that's an American flag that kind of just melted away in the Texas sun, I guess. But yeah, this car is going to be as big of a surprise for you as it is for me. I I have no clue what's in there, but let's get back on the road. Now we got about maybe, maybe 50 miles. We'll get back to the exact, exact same gas pump that we started from, and we will figure out our fuel mileage with the Ford F-350 big block 390 cubic inch. How does a trash can out in a place like this get caved in? Did some spotty youth or juvenile delinquent drop kick it on a family road trip? 
Or is that lawnmower damage? County employees. Just saw this on the way out. The site was donated for park purposes to the State Highway Department. Jeez Louise! Of Tejas by Dr. H. M. Haynes, 1935. An admirer of the new Rambler approached me here at the uh, service station. He uh, was excited to see a Rambler. He uh, hadn't seen one in a long time and that caught him by surprise. He had to come take a peek and then he wished me good luck. $47.51 in fuel. Let's hope I didn't overpay for the car because yeah, you know, it's, it's just, it's just, I need more money, man. Anyways, we will struggle through our math problem here on a part store receipt. All right, the trip meter says 182 and a half miles from this pump to the Rambler and then back to this pump. So we'll call that, you know, we should probably call that 180, well, uh, well, all right, let's try to be accurate here at first, and then maybe we'll do some roundage. So we'll just say 182.5, and we burnt approximately 15.330 gallons of fuel. We'll probably end up rounding that up to 15.5 when we can't do this math here. So 15.33, I don't think we need the zero on the end. Is that right, math guys? Anyone who made it through sixth grade math? chime in. Here we are an embarrassing amount of time later. I think we got it by golly. 11.9. Yikes. In just a second we'll talk about why our fuel mileage was below 12 miles per gallon. But first it's time for me to go surprise the neighbors. Oh they're gonna love it. They're gonna love it. Well, I would call that a success. 12 wheels and none of them came off. I gotta say, I think the neighbors couldn't be happier. And you know, some might mistake the look on their faces to be shock and horror, but I think they're actually genuinely excited. They know that projects get done really fast inside Freeman's Garage and there's gonna be a gorgeous car out there any day. And also I think they they understand that that things could be worse. I mean I could have brought home a hearse that had been crushed by a monster truck at a, a county fair that I think is restorable. That could be in the front yard. About the fuel mileage, we could have done better than 11.9 miles per gallon, but it was the route that we took. Instead of taking the interstate where it's, yeah, there's a lot of traffic, but it's flat and there's no traffic lights. We took back roads, which I knew it was gonna, you know, not be the best fuel mileage going that way, but I wanted to see the, the scenery and this route, it, just so happens that it was one of these up and down big hills the whole way and 
back and forth, you know, not mountains, but enough to kill your mileage. And little towns every 10, 12 miles with one stop sign or one stoplight. Next time we go pick up a car together, if we're in the one ton Ford again, we'll try to do a more uh, flatter interstate route and, and see what happens. We'll do a, a comparison. Thank you as always for hitting the thumbs up button, the subscribe button, and the arrow button to share these videos with your family and friends. It helps a lot more than you probably realize. Oh man, oh man. Yeah, we don't know anything. Wakens, Wakens, Wakians.